If you want to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is on Instagram. If you just want to say what up, if you want to tell me you love my videos, you can tell me that you hate my videos, but the best way to do that is on Instagram. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Ray J wants Donald Trump to pardon Shook Knight. And day two of Chris Brown's yard sale, one of his fans finds something very interesting in the pocket of a hoodie. Plus, Busy Bone says no rapper out today is gonna still be around in 25 years. Let's talk hip hop. All right, so uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, I talked about how Ray J got the rights to, uh, well, I guess, Suge Knight's whole life, right? But then we found out it's not really Suge Knight's whole life, that Ray J is just gonna be working on like death row as far as reviving the record label and the music, right? Um, and that other people have the rights to Suge Knight's life, like this woman named Toy, um, and even Nick Cannon's gonna be writing a book, right? But Ray J wants to try to help his big homie, Suge Knight, get out of jail or out of prison, right? Um, so the whole situation is that Suge Knight, big bad blood CEO Suge Knight from death row from the 90s is locked up right now for 28 years in prison for vehicular manslaughter, right? Basically, he killed somebody with his car on the set of Straight Outta Compton. But here's the whole thing, right? Um, Suge Knight said, yes, you know, he did admit to it. He pled guilty, but he also said that it was self-defense. He said that he was in fear for his life. And there is surveillance footage of the incident and it looks like one of the dudes is running up to Suge Knight with something black in his hand, right? Could have been a cell phone, we don't know. But Suge Knight is in his vehicle and basically kind of, you know, I guess got scared or whatever and, you know, put the vehicle forward, then put the vehicle back, then put the vehicle forward, then back again, right? And basically rolled over two men, right? Killing one and injuring another, right? Um, so they arrested him, they had him on camera, uh, it was a murder trial, they said, we gonna give you life in California and you could get the death penalty in California so he said fine 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 it was a mistake I did it but it was self-defense and they gave him 28 years right which is crazy because Shug Knight is damn near 60 years old so for 28 years that you'll be locked up he's not gonna be out until he's like 70 something right which is really horrible but a lot of people feel like he deserves it based on his past, right? Um, so here's the whole thing, right? Ray J now um, is kind of petitioning to Donald Trump's administration that he wants Donald Trump to look at, you know, Suge Knight's case, uh, take into account everything that I just explained to y'all and, you know, give him a pardon, right? And I guess that he's kind of inspired by Kim K because Kim K was able to get a few people pardons and get them out of prison uh, based on her relationship with Donald Trump and his administration administration, right? But the whole thing though is like for real, everybody that Kim K is getting out of prison has committed non-violent offenses like, you know, drug trafficking in 1996 or whatever the case may be, right? Um, the whole thing with Suge Knight is one, it wasn't that long ago, right? This whole thing happened in 2015, so only four years ago. And two, it is a violent offense, right? Um, it's a murder. So it's not like, hey, nobody got hurt. Yeah, I got caught with a hundred pounds of weed weed, but you know, I need to get out of jail. And plus weed is legal in California now. So what the fuck, right? It's not that it's more like, look, murder is not legal anywhere. Right. And it should not. So I'm not too sure if Donald Trump will is willing to let should Knight out of prison, but Hey, Ray J, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and try. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have anything against that. Right. Um, and there's also a couple of people like on Twitter and everything buzzing about how, you know, if Ray J goes and sits down with Donald Trump, then they're basically going to say, oh, Ray J is a sellout. And, it, you know, it's not going to look good for Ray J as an African-American person who's in hip hop to sit with Donald Trump, just like it didn't look good for Kanye to do it. So that's why they're kind of pressuring him not even to approach Donald Trump with that. Right. Um, but I think that is different because Ray J will be sitting down and, and a lot of people have meetings with people that they don't agree with politically right you sit down with your boss every damn day and you don't agree with him politically you think he's an asshole but you guys got to sit down and get something done and put something together right so if Ray J sits down with Donald Trump who's an asshole you know he's doing it for a reason he's doing it because he's trying to get Suge Knight out of jail and it's cool right he's not like Kanye trying to lick Kanye's balls or uh, trying to lick Donald Trump's balls so we gonna let Ray J live you feel me um but Hey, yo, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments down below.
All right, Joe, so it's day two of Chris Brown's yard sale, right? Um, and like, what is it, Thursday? So on like Monday or something like that, I was like, wow, okay, Chris Brown gives out his address, right? But it's not that he's giving out his address because he wants people to just come over his crib and like hang out with him. He has like a dead ass yard sale, right? And I guess Chris Brown is not really at the yard sale, but his people and his team are, right? And Chris Brown has mad stuff, right? And it seems like they're only selling like clothes and sneakers which you know is cool but it's not like Chris Brown's like selling you know his dining room table or whatever the case may be right um, the whole situation though is that all right so he had the yard sale yesterday right Wednesday and then also today on Thursday and a bunch of people are there it's all day long it's like from 10 o'clock in the morning to 7 p.m. there's lines of hundreds of people um, and it's really actually going off pretty successful I'm guessing that Chris Brown probably had a bunch of shit that he was probably like yo I want to give away um, <clears throat> or throw away and then he was like instead of doing that let me just have a yard sale right and some of the stuff chris brown probably never even wore right um but anyway so one thing that he did wear was um a hoodie that he had right a tumbleweed hoodie right um and i guess one of his fans bought it or whatever like that but then they looked in the pocket of the hoodie and there was like this pill bottle in there filled up with like a bunch of weed right and the the uh the weed was labeled um or the pill bottle was labeled panda kush right so i guess chris brown has some panda kush or whatever in his uh in the pill bottle and that you know everything i guess he forgot it in the hoodie so it's funny as hell because like in california California, recreational weed is legal so ain't nothing gonna happen to Chris Brown or the chick that really got the weed I mean she got two things she got weed and the damn hoodie right she probably smoking it right now like yo there's pandas from Chris Brown you know what I'm saying but it's cool as hell and also funny right but I guess man probably other fans will probably find some other stuff in the pockets too and am I imagine buying like a pair of jeans from Chris Brown and finding like a thousand dollars in the pocket or something like that that's cool right um also, you know, there were a couple complaints or whatever like that. So for the most part, like I said, the uh, yard sale's been going good, right? Uh, he did it yesterday. He's doing it today. I don't think he's doing it tomorrow or anything like that because, I mean, a lot of people are there and a lot of people bought a lot of stuff, right? Um, but there were a couple of complaints. Yeah, the police were like back and forth to Chris Brown's house. Yeah, they were saying, oh, you need a permit to have a yard sale and blah, blah, blah. You really don't need any kind of permit to have a yard sale in California, but of course, it's Chris Brown and it's not like a couple of people are coming by to look at some you know antiques it's like mad hype beasts are there and you know they they really there goes the neighborhood type stuff so you know of course there were some people the neighbors and everybody complaining somebody even said Chris Brown you know specifically bought stuff to the yard sale to sell or whatever the case may be and he didn't you know he said yo I bought everything from inside of my house it's not like I bought something here specifically to sell because that that is, you know, off limits against, you know, yard sale etiquette or whatever, I guess, right? Um, but anyway, uh, the whole moral of the story is check your pockets if you have a yard sale because Shorty just came up. Um, but anyway, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. 25 years from now. Today? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, so uh, Busy Bone was on Big Boy TV, right? Um, and Big Boy asked him a question. And I don't really know why Big Boy asked this question, and it really kind of seemed like Busy Bone wasn't prepared for it, but he did answer the question as best as he could. I ain't trying to sit here and shit on a legend or go in on Busy Bone, uh, but he was wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> but all right, so Big Boy asked him, uh, without saying names or anything like that, is there anybody that's in hip hop right now that you uh, would, that would be relevant enough to even have an interview uh, 25 years from now, right? And I guess, okay, the reason why Big Boy asked him the question is because, you know, Busy Bone has been relevant for 25 years, so, and he's, he's had an interview today, right, with Big Boy, so it's like, do you know of anybody else that would be able to do what you are doing right now, right? Um, and Busy Bone says no, right? So he was basically like, you know, with the way that social media would just like chew you up and spit you out, um, and the way that 
you know, we're in this microwave kind of climate where, you know, it's, you know, new music today and then tomorrow they forget about you. He says, no, uh, it's not like the 90s where it's sustainable and where you can build a strong fan base, right? But Busy Bone is kind of acting like he's not in the social media era too. Like you're a rapper and social media has been around for quite some time now, right? Um, and I think that he's dead wrong because for me, it's all about what you do in the game during your time. And then if you look back and you say, oh, okay, well, this person had it locked from here to there, then it's hard to really get around the fact that they would still be relevant even 25 years from now, right? So, you know, Bone Thugs, they had a nice little run, right? They had a good, you know, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. They had a cool like five year run, right? But then in 97, you know, Jay-Z was coming out hard, right? DMX was coming out hard. Rough Riders was coming out hard in 98, right? Um, so, you know, the Bone Thugs kind of fell off. Not saying that they were trash, but they weren't as hot as they used to be, right? And a nice five year solid run enables anybody from the group of Bone Thugs in harmony to still be relevant today which is cool right so the Migos they've had a seven year run so far so you mean and they changed the flow in hip hop so you mean to tell me that nobody's going to want to interview Offset 25 years from now you got to be kidding me of course they would right Drake has had a 10 11 12 year run right and he's also influenced hip hop a whole lot you mean to tell me that he's not going to be nobody's going to want to interview a Drake 25 years from now of course they will right um, Noriega, Nori, right? He he was going hard for 20 years now, right? And he interviews Pete. And the reason why Drink Champs are so successful is because Nori is a legend in the game and interviews people and interviews himself and lets those people interview him by even asking him questions 20 years from when he started, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of weird and funny uh, that, you know, Busy Bone would even say that, right? Um, Kendrick Lamar, right? Will still be relevant today, right? Um, I, I don't know, right? So I think that he really didn't have enough time to prepare for that question, but there are countless rappers that I can name, right? So of course, I'm not saying Little Nas X, right? Because it's too soon for him, right? I'm not saying Dave East because it's too soon for him, even though I think Dave East is building a nice solid, you know, fan base right now, right? Um, maybe even not even Nipsey Hussle. Maybe people will be talking about Nipsey 25 years from now, right? Maybe, right? But if you're going to tell me that there are no rappers out today that people are going to talk about 25 years from now, you're bugging, right? Your Jay Coles, your Migos, your Drake, Rick Ross, right? Like, come on, bro. Like, I really believe that Busy Bone kind of misspoke, uh, but he wasn't really thinking all that much. And I think that he was thinking more of, you know, I guess he was kind of thinking social media. So he maybe was thinking more about like your little pumps, right? Your little Zan, um, Fat Boy SSE, right? Or, or people like that, right? Um, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't thinking at all, right? Uh, but let me know what y'all think about this and everything else in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Follow me at Johnny Fastlane on Instagram. Y'all already know what to do. Peace.